I want to calculate the path of the shortest time between two points. And so this is the famous problem. This is the uh, Brachistochrome problem, which means fastest time. And I've done this. I've done a derivation of this problem before because it's a, it's a it's often used as an example of the Euler-Lagrange equation, uh, but it's not the simplest. Uh, so the the point is this: suppose I have some uh, wire, and then I have a bead that can slide along the wire, and the question is which path should this wire take to get to from point one to point two in the shortest amount of time, not the shortest distance, which is of course a straight line, but it turns out, oops. But it turns out that the shortest time is a path sort of like this. Uh, now, I've already done this problem, and I'm going to show you my. I, I did the. I have a link. I'll put the link down below for the derivation of uh, the cycloid, which is the solution to this problem. I also did a numerical calculation to determine this. I'm going to do it a new way, just because I wanted to do it. Um, so let me show you real quickly my my previous numerical calculation, because I think it it gives you some insight. Okay, switching to the computer. So here we are. Uh, this is my problem. I'm just going to run this for you. So in this code, make that bigger, uh, I have two points. It's going to start here. It's going to go down there. And this is the total time. And so I'm breaking my curve into a finite number of elements. And then for each of these elements, what I do is I vary uh, this up and down. I move it up and down to get the minimum time for the whole path. And then I, I do this one, right? Because changing this will change the time for this one. So then I, I keep redoing them all, going through the whole thing and changing them. Let's just see what it looks like when it runs. I think I can do that. Let's see. Let's just run it right here. I guess it took away the run button. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So you see these uh, vertical balls are just, I'm going through each a uh, bunch of vertical positions until I find one that has the smallest time. And then I'm putting the point there, then moving to the next point and so on forth. And this does give a good solution. Uh, I, if you compare this to the exact solution, it's, it's pretty close. I mean, uh, it's not the exact solution because I broke it into finite points, but it works fairly well. Okay. so. I want to do this a different way, a similar but different way. Number one, I'm not going to make a three-dimensional model. This is actually in three dimensions, you see. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to make a graph. Number two, I'm not going to give this, each one of these balls goes through all range of possibilities uh, from here to there until it finds the minimum time. What I'm going to do is just jiggle each one of them. I'm going to jiggle them. Uh, I'm going to use random numbers. So let me show you the basic idea uh, on paper. And I've already written this program. Normally I write it live, but I encountered quite a few errors. And so I, I just, I was making mistakes. So let's, let's see how we're going to do this. Switching to overhead. Okay. So imagine that I have two points right here and right there. And I have a bunch of points in between. Let's just say I have one, two, three, four. So these are the points. I'm not going to change that one. I'm not going to change that one. Those are set. And these are all equally spaced in the x direction. So the x distance between all these is the same. What I'm going to do is to randomly move all these points. So I'm going to randomly move this one up, randomly move that one down, randomly move that one, randomly move that one, and recalculate the time. Okay, so I need to calculate how long does it take to get to the end. And if that time is shorter than the previous time, then I'm going to make this the new path, which that's obviously not the shortest time. And then I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to kind of jiggle each point randomly until I end up with the shortest time. So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, calculate the time it takes to go from one each path each, in between each balls, it's a straight line. So let's just call this, I'm going to call it P1 and P2. I'm going to call it X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And I want to find out how long it takes to get. There's no friction from that point to that point. 
And on top of that, if I'm down at this point, another thing I need to know is how fast it starts. So I'm going to call this V1. So I'm going to start with the initial velocity. I'm going to get the time it takes to get to the bottom. And then I'm going to return V2 so I can use it again. So I'm going to build a function that gives me the speed and time to travel between two points. So the first thing that we need to do is to calculate, and there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, let's calculate this distance between them, S. So S is going to be the hypotenuse of this triangle. So S is going to be equal to the square root of the change in X, which is going to be X2 minus X1 quantity squared, plus Y2 minus Y1 quantity squared. So that's the distance. Now I need to calculate the acceleration. Uh, so that's going to be kind of difficult, but let's, it's not impossible. So let's say this is, I'm going to call this uh, delta x, delta y, s, and theta. So if I have a block right there, then the gravitational force pulls down, but the acceleration is in this direction. So if I know that angle theta, I can say a equals g sine theta, because this is the same angle theta, and the acceleration is that component. I got a little small right there, I apologize. So what about sine theta? I don't know theta, but I do know sine theta. Sine theta is S over, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So this is gonna be equal to G, the positive 9.8, times uh, opposite, which is delta Y, over S. So I know the acceleration. Now I can use the kinematic equation. I can say uh, S2 equals S1 plus V1T, which I know, plus 1 half AT squared. I just realized I might have made an error. No, I got it right. So S1 is zero. That's the, the position up here. It starts there. V1 is not, okay? And S2 is that distance. So I need to uh, find time from this equation. So it looks like I'm gonna have to use a quadratic equation. So I'm gonna, let's get a new piece of paper. Actually, let's do this. No, I do need the quadratic equation. So I had S2, which is just S, equals uh, V1T plus 1 half A. And I'm going to go ahead and put in A, which is, uh, what did I just say it was? G delta Y over S, G delta Y over S, T squared. So using the quadratic equation, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I got this, T equals negative V1. This doesn't seem right. Okay, negative V1, it is right. Plus uh, the square root of V1 squared plus 2AS, that's the quadratic equation, I'm using the plus one, divided by A. So that's my time. Now, I also need to get the final velocity. Uh, that's not so bad. V2 equals V1 plus A T, which I just calculated T. So I can make a function that returns those things. So I give it, so here's my function. Function. I'm gonna give it X1, Y1, X2, y2, that's the, the starting and ending points, and v1, and I'm going to return t and v2. That's what I want to do. Okay, now what do I do next? Now suppose I have uh, some points, and I want to calculate the total time. That's pretty easy. All I'll do is uh, calculate the time between these two, calculate the time between these two, these two, these two, these two, and add them all up. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, I think that's good to go ahead and look at the code. So let's look at the code. I already can't remember what I wrote, so let's just look at it. 
Uh, so that's my other program. Let's see, here is the one I want to look at. Okay, so let's go over the important parts of this code. Number one, this stuff just makes a graph. That, I'm making two graphs. I'm making one graph that shows the path. Okay, I'm actually going to start with a straight line path and then the final path. So that actually two curves in that one graph. The second graph, I'm going to show the time as a function of the number of iterations I go through. So every time I have an n, I'm going to change things up and change the time. And it is possible that I could move in, I could increase my n and have a longer time. So I wouldn't change the time. So it only decreases. Okay, these are my starting and ending points. P, X, 1. I try to do this as a vector, but weird things happen in Python when you use uh, vectors and lists uh, and you try to change those lists, so don't do that. Uh, and I, I don't even know if I'm able to explain why. This is my final point, P2, X, P2, Y. That's X, Y coordinate. This is the number of pieces that I'm going to break uh, it into, right? I'm going to have 20 steps along the way. So with that, I need to calculate how big is my X step and how big is my Y step. My initial string is this going to be a straight line between the two p is a list of it's actually the y values it's a list of the y values going from point to point so i'm going to have it as a list and then pn is going to be my new list so every time i'm going to have a list and a new list and so when i change my new list i need to see if it's better than my old one and that's the case i'll set my old list to my new list so but i need two lists uh, x is my list of X values, that's not going to change. I'm going to equally space them all. I'm going to change the Y values. Uh, N equals zero is just a counter. Uh, so this stuff right here, it makes N number of points between zero and uh, my P1 and P2. Now, if I had actual Python in the numpy function, I could use a range, but I don't have a range. I don't think a range is in Google Script V Python. This is not actual Python, just so you know. And I'm going to give you the code for both these, these programs. So I go through and I make so all my, my list of X values, my list of Y values. I have two lists of Y values, right? Because I'm going to change one of them. Uh, so this stuff right here just plots the straight line path. Now this is that function that takes in X1, X2, Y1, Y2, X1, X2, Y1, Y2, and the initial velocity for a straight segment and returns the time and the velocity at the end. So I... Did, you can switch to vectors here. It's just easier to switch it to vectors. So I make P1 a vector, P2 a vector, and then I can say, what's the change in X? What's the change in Y? What's S is the magnitude of the difference. That's really easy. Uh, the acceleration is, should it be? Uh, YP is negative, that's why. right? Because YP is the final position is going down. Uh, that's why that's a negative number. This is, if, if it's straight, if the stra segment's straight like this, then I can't use that quadratic equation. It's not going to work. Uh, so, but it's easy. Then it doesn't accelerate. Uh, I couldn't use it because I'd be dividing by zero. It doesn't accelerate, so the velocity at the end is the velocity at the beginning, and I can just use distance over time type things to find the, the time. So that's that. That takes care of that case. Otherwise, I can use that uh, and calculate the time, TP, that's the time at the end, temporary time, and V2, the velocity at the end. And then the function returns both of those. Uh, right here, I'm just testing it out. Here's the, the time it takes to go from point one to point two if there's one straight segment, segment uh, starting with an initial velocity of zero. That was just for testing. Now here's another function that returns the total time. So here I have my list of X values, my list of Y values, uh, and I use those. So TT is the, the sum of the times. So I need a counter. VC is... That's the velocity at the end of each time segment, okay? So I'm going to change that. So I go through uh, starting at the second element, right? Because the first one, I don't want to find the time for the first one. It hasn't gone anywhere. So I call that function with the x before it and the x, the y before it and the y, and the initial velocity. And then I add that time to my total. So the this is... In case you haven't seen this, the previous function returned two things, a time and a velocity. So I, I call the function over here and set it equal to those two things. Right, so I have them as names. You don't actually have to do that. I could call the function twice, but it will run slower. 
Uh, and then I'm going to use the velocity at the end of that for my next velocity. So I'm, I'm setting VC, which I started with up here, uh, to V next, which I got from the function. And then I just keep doing that for all the points and return the time. And then I tested that over here. So that's not that. Here is another counter I called it a different thing. And this is uh, 5,000. I'm going to do this 5,000. I'm going to jiggle it 5,000 times. So the first thing I do right here is this is jiggling it. This goes through uh, starting with the second element to the second to last element. And this 2 times random minus 1, this returns a number between negative 1 and 1. Right, because random in Python in GlowScript v Python is a number between 0 and 1. I multiply that by 2 and then subtract 1. So the biggest it could be is 1, because 2 minus 1. The smallest it could be is 0 minus 1 or negative 1. And then I multiply that by an amplitude. So I'm going to be moving them up 0 0.01 uh, maximum. So I have small jiggles. And you, that's, a, that's a fun thing to change and play with. This is also a fun thing to change. Now I'm going to calculate the total time for that. Right, using my x values, my new p values. Uh, and if that new time is less than the previous time, then I'm going to make the new, old, the old time, then the old time is that new time. Couldn't I just put t new? I think I put t new there. I'm not watch I rerun the function. That's fine. I don't want to change it just yet. Uh, and then this is where I made a mistake also. I go through and I set the elements in P equal to the elements in PN. You can't say P equals PN because then those two things are pointing to the same location and you change one, they change together. You have to go element by element, at least in this Python. Increase in and then I, inc and then I just plot my, my oldest time, my current time. Uh, then this just plots the final solution and that's that. So let's run this thing and see what happens. Okay, so here's the straight line distance. Uh, this is the curve. Remember, I only have 20 points in between there, so that's why it looks this way. Uh, and then this is kind of cool. Here is my plot of the time as a function of iteration. And you can see that as you get further in, you don't get as much of a gain, right? And, once this levels out, you're at the exact time. Uh, so you could run this for a longer time, uh, but that's that. And then there's my straight line test. Here's my test, the straight line test. And then there's my new time with this curve that I, I created. And that's just, that agrees with my Python program. Now, I do want to I do want to break this because I'm going to try something real quick. It'd be fun to animate this. I've done that in the past, but I, I'm just, I really want to do another variational problem. That's why I, I'm just, I, didn't write this live. So let's go down here and try. If you have the two points very close to the same height, uh, then it actually curves down and back up for the optimal curve. I want to see if I can get that. So here, P1x, P1y is 0. Let's make this P2x at 3. No, let's keep that at 1 and put this 1. And let's just make the drop. Uh, 0.3. I just, it may not work. Okay, it did it. Yeah, I did it. Look at that. So it actually goes back up to get to the end. I'm pretty excited about that. That does, that's pretty nice. And then there's my function. Okay, now there's a couple things that you could do if you want to play with this for homework. Uh, number one, I, if you look over here at the code, right down here. I change the new line randomly. And then I calculate the time. You could calculate the time after changing each point. I could just change one point. Did that make a difference? Change the next point. Did that make a difference? Instead of just changing the whole thing. It should work that way too, but that's something to try. Um, the other thing would be to try. I had two things to change. Well, I can't. Oh, the other would be to plot the, the theoretical solution for the, the best curve, too. Uh, that one's actually kind of, diff it's a difficult equation to plot, so I didn't want to do it. I did it before, uh, but you could add that in there, too. So, okay. Random numbers, example of the variation principle to find the function of the shortest time, um, just for fun. Hope that helps.